Welcome to Happily Ever Aftermath, the podcast where we discuss relationships in movies and our relationships with them. I'm Plea Grinfield. And I'm Diana Rojek Sconner. Hello, Diana. Hey, Paulina. Merry Christmas. Uh, happy holidays. Yeah, much happy. better. Um, cause yeah, cause you know, I yeah. was, um, yeah, I, I'm still in a Thanksgiving mood. It's yeah, it's it's difficult to uh, to shift, but I feel like this is this is it's it's time now. It's, it's holiday time. It's holiday time, and yeah. so we're doing a holiday movie of sorts. Yeah, I mean, on technicality, I mean. Okay, we'll get into it. I later. feel like this is a total Christmas movie. Well, yeah, because it's it, it even says it gives you markers of okay, yeah. we're talking about love actually. <laughs> That's the first step one. Two thousand three. Let's establish the movie. <laughs> Let's establish this movie. Um Love Actually, two thousand three. Uh the description from the Google search. Uh nine intertwined stories examine the complexities of the one emotion that connects us all, love. And then a bunch of people are in this. Mm-hmm. And we will yes. name them as we go. Right. Because we actually had to do a little bit of planning, math, and um, uh, concessions to get this uh, just right. Exactly. So we decided we're going to do it in two parts. Yep. Because it would take us too long to talk about everyone, and then we would argue about who to talk to first. So we decided that we would do two parts. So we will do, um, since there's nine people, it's going to be quite difficult to do half. Havesies? You mean nine sets of... Nine sets of relationships. Nine stories. Nine intertwining stories. Intertwining. And the fact that they're intertwining just makes it so much worse. Exactly. I also want to thank uh, whoever created and then subsequently contributed to the Wikipedia image that mapped out this entire movie. I can't... Literally, we could not do this without them. We would, but it would be really horrible. Oh, it would be terrible. Or it would be slightly less good. <laughs> Yeah. We don't know yet. We'll find out. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it makes it a lot easier. And uh, I uh, and and also the relationships don't kind of happen. I mean, the some of the connections kind of you figure out it sort of toward the end. So it's really mm-hmm. nice to actually see how they relate to each other. Right. And it's and some of it is just kind of like just random, like like their neighbors or their neighbors or they delivered food to their place exactly. or one happens to be friends. Well, no, this one's a good one. One is friends with one, but also works with this, exactly. this set of people. Yeah. So that yeah, they actually all that, sort of travel within the world. Uh-huh. Um, so each other's worlds. Um, also should note if we've learned anything from our mannequin episode, yeah. if you have great songs, I'm going to love this movie. Yeah, the music. Okay, the, I have, uh, of the modern Christmas songs, mm-hmm. all I want for Christmas is my odds-on favorite. Like, mm-hmm. no doubt, is my is my personal favorite. Is that's, it the best? No. Well, that's a I don't that, know. that's a get you in the right mood song. Yes. Whereas mine is also, um, shoot, the Stevie What's Wonder yours? song. Um, that's what Christmas means to me. Oh, that's a good one. I had to sing it in my head to get to the line. That's the I know, title I know. of the yeah. No, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Candles burning low, what, lots of mistletoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Christmas means to well, me. Well, it was funny because when you said Stevie Wonder song, I'm like, I know exactly the song she's talking about, but I cannot remember the actual title. Because the because the title of the song is not doomed. <laughs> and that's what I like a lot about it. That is actually the best part. Yeah. My One of my favorite, Carol of the Bells, I, I, I love, but that's not a modern Christmas song. But I like it. I like it. I would argue that um, All I Want for Christmas is you, not modern because it was like so like, old. I know I know I know God, I'm so old I know okay but like five couples yeah five couples. five couples so we're gonna hit five couples um I want to hit one of the one of the people of the couple yeah. <laughs> shall we use that as an opening yes. let's <laughs> actually there's more wait 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 let's start with the usual okay. how did okay so okay this ahead. is a classic movie uh, uh 2003 I mean but this is a movie this is it's when I say classic, I mean that like, even if you haven't seen it, you know about it. Classic is a terrible word. I'm so, it's it's in the zeitgeist. It's in the zeit. It's there. It's present. It's pop culture. Yeah. I mean, it's no. Hey, it's on TBS for 24 hours, and you'll shoot your eye out. Classic. No. 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 Though. No. Yeah. I love. I love that movie. But oh, anyway. yeah. Okay. Um. So. Uh, so what was your experience? So when did you first encounter love actually under what circumstances? I have a very distinct memory of being at my apartment when I was away at college and Mm -hmm. watching it in the living room with a someone Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if that someone was Ryan or I don't know if that someone was a friend of mine, Mm -hmm. but someone was definitely there. Okay. (laughs) And did you, do you, is this movie part of your, like a tradition of your, like, have you re-seen this before you had to watch it for the episode? I've watched it a few times because I bought it and I remember Mm. enjoying it a lot when I watched it. Okay. Um, but kind of what's straight- so the first time you watched it was like Redbox or it was on TV. Or there whatever. was no Redbox at the time. Okay. Um, but yeah, the 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 blockbuster okay. where I rented ah, from. Ah, blockbuster. And Possibly you didn't own it. Didn't mm-hmm. own it, but um, eventually did own it. Mm-hmm. A Best Buy purchase, most likely. Okay. Yeah, because I remember it not being like three for ten dollars. Right. Sale. Nice thingy. No, it wasn't. Because it yeah. used, you it was not. Bought I bought it. it new. You bought it new. You committed to this movie. It well, it was cheap. But and then and then did you rewatch it? Um, not as consistently because it's this. This is a movie that feels like I'm good. Like I'll watch it and then I don't need to watch it again for a while. Right. It's like it has served its purpose for this moment in which I wanted to watch it. Mm-hmm. I'll come back to it later and then right. I, it, it later is like chunks of time. So do you have other? Do you have Christmas movies that you watch every year? Die Hard. Okay, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, that's a lot of people I know, and that's their uh, it, it beca- that is their Christmas movie. It became a thing recently, and it, it became fun. Yeah. Um, not I cri- that is a fun, not Christmas per se, but I, I may have mentioned this before. Ryan and I like to watch the extended Lord of the Rings trilogy Aww. during the wintry time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, movies were a big part. When I was a, a little kid over the wintry time. Um, my parent, we would well. At one point, we would rent a VCR when they were kind of expensive because um, I'm old, and and then and we just that was our our thing. We just hel- we would hole up with just movies and watch like four movies a day for mm. like five days. That's that's fun. It was it was really fun. Um, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, like things would I, go numb after a while, but yeah. Oh yeah, no, it wasn't good. And and it's it's probably we probably didn't do it every time. I think the time we really did it, but that was kind of the goal. Like that's my memory of it. Um, and that was yeah, it was really nice. Um, That'd be funny. It's just like that was my memory of it. We didn't do it. Well, no, we but did it, but that was sort of the like idea. I'm sure the reality wasn't that every single day for six, you know, between Christmas and New Year, we like did nothing but watch movies. Except probably, you know, one year when somebody was ill or something. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, there was like as many movies as we could watch. Um, this was not one of them because this <laughs> came out in 2003 and yep. I lived uh, in San Francisco away from my parents. Mm-hmm. Um, so oh, I, speaking of watching this yeah, with your parents. Right. Now, as much as this is a nice movie to watch with a loved one or people that you're very happy with, um, I learned from experience that it is very awkward to have this movie on as a background Christmas movie. Is this a, is this a PSA? Well, it's not a PSA so much as, um, a cautionary tale. Yeah. Um, because you're trying to save I'm someone not else's family. Well, cause it, it's not that I put it on saying like, Hey, let's watch this for the holidays. Cause it's a Christmas movie. But mm-hmm. that had happened to me oh. where I had gone to my in-laws and then, mm-hmm. it, you know, it was, I will protect the innocent. Um, Except you've narrowed it down to approximately. I was going to say, yeah. It's your, um, all of a sudden, there's just someone had said like, "Hey, let's watch Love Actually," and I turn to Ryan and I go like, "I don't know if that's a good. Yeah, those are nipples. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to go into the I other feel room. Like, yeah, my my uh, of the you know my father of the uh, my parents of the pre aforementioned. Um, um, let's get as many movies in a day. I think gave up around seven, having them be appropriate. Um, so, uh, so yeah, there was just, yeah, a lot yeah. of discomfort. Um, understood. And there's many opportunities for nudity in this movie. There is. I mean, like weirdly, and, and actually I'm kind of parroting something that Ryan, our esteemed producer, uh, said, uh, he was like, yeah, I don't remember it being so, I don't think the word he used was this, but I was like, you know, so kind of nude. Like there's, they, there's just a lot of opportunity for uh, nudity that they take up with relish. Yes. Make note people. Uh, This is a rated R movie. Yeah. It's not like new year's day or Valentine's day where it's just like Gary Marshall and all these people that were in pretty woman Mm -hmm. and they're adorable and they hint at these things, but you don't Mm -hmm. have to worry about the actual family friendly. Yeah. If you, uh, Especially if you, yeah, if, if, if women's nipples are, you know, not a thing and, and, and some butts is not something you like to see, 
probably not the movie for you. But and yet I'm here. And yet we're here. Yeah, exactly. But no, we're watching it. So um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're watching it. So you, you, you'll survive. Um, All right. I my uh, memory is I saw this, and I'm actually not 100 percent sure of this, but I'm I uh, like uh, my husband and I spent like three days trying to figure out. We knew we saw it together. Mm. The both of us have seen it. And at some point we saw it together, if it was the whole thing or part of And then I also know for a fact that I watched it on a plane. Did you cry? Oh, hell yeah. I cried like seeing it, re-seeing it. I, so wait, you, when you rewatched it for the podcast, did you cry? Oh yeah. I also cried. Oh, we had yeah. a call. Oh, I also cried. cried. Yeah. So the, I actually find the most affecting of all of these to be the first scene at where there, none of these characters actually appear, which is the Heathrow scene. Oh. And so I started crying the minute it came out. Now, um, I, uh, my husband's a movie crier. So there was, I, that's why I remember watching it with him. Cause I remember like only getting that. So is he I okay think with you sharing this, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I will find out. Okay. <laughs> he better be. And he, he doesn't listen that much. Um, he doesn't listen that often, so moving on. <laughs> He'll never know. Um, so I, uh, yeah. So then I realized, oh, I was like, well, th- probably wouldn't have watched it on a plane together because you know you have two different screens. We would have had to. But then I realized it came out in two two thousand three, and that's still when one big screen. You had either one big screen or you had one screen oh, that everybody three, three watches. Rows. Everybody watches the same movie. Like you yeah. have, you know, mm-hmm. you have. You, you either pay for the stupid thing mm-hmm. or whatever, but yes. it was like, it, or it was free, but you, you, you're, you're all captive. So yep. I, I think we saw it on a plane and I think we saw it together. Mm-hmm. That's my guess. I don't, I feel like maybe this has been on and I've watched it and watch. I, there's somebody that I, that listens that I'm close to that she and I watched it or he and I, and, uh, you're I am so, so sorry. <laughs> and um but uh yeah i don't really remember re-watching whole bits of this like i have a feeling i've caught parts of it on tv but yep it, like in hotel rooms as i was packing kind mm-hmm. of thing sure so so do you want to get into the the w- was there anything else you wanted to say or do you want to get into the nuts and bolts of these characters that we've chosen for f- part one Oh, let's just do it okay so in this particular instance we have decided to focus on so colin uh, Chris Marshall, who is the one who wants to go to America because he's so adorable because he's British and he's striking, de- you know, striking out with all these British chicks yeah, because he's British not. British chicks don't want him no. because he, they just don't appreciate him. You know who blindly loves English accents? Americans. America. I will say. So I worked in a Scottish pub for a long time, mm-hmm. and um, you got fired because you weren't Scottish. Uh, <laughs> weirdly, no. Um, uh, it was also, it was owned by Koreans, so we kind of... Did. And you were fired because you weren't Korean. Um, no, no, no um, once, Because that's yes, discrimination. But, but getting, yeah, getting, firing or not, employment was a very fuzzy sort of thing there. But uh, I definitely um, witnessed uh, a lot of, uh, I, I feel Fawning. like it's not, it's not completely off. I feel like his ideas... I do not want to give any credence to Colin, but his ideas are not completely off. So it's based in reality, but at the same time, thoughts on Colin. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah. Thumbs down. Anyway, we'll get into that. So Colin, Chris Marshall, that's mm-hmm. a little bit. And of he has got a friend, him. Tony, who yes. is played by uh, Abdul, Abdul Salis. Salis. Uh huh. And he is, he's friends with Colin, but he also works on a movie set mm-hmm. we, where we are introduced to Judy and John portrayed by Joanna Page. Just Judy. Well, that's, that's how she's credited, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going to give her credence. Or, oh, she is more than. She is Judy and that's John I, and this is Martin Freeman. Go I on. actually really, so, uh, yeah, Martin Freeman, I mean, Martin Freeman, there's this, so much to talk about, but there, uh, this was my I, first introduction. Are you familiar with, oh, really? This, th- well, watching this movie for the first time was oh, my first oh, introduction yeah. that actually makes sense. to Martin Freeman. Yeah. And then eventually I came to appreciate his, his other works, came back to this movie. I'm like, oh my God, that's him. I know. I know. I, um, so I just want to actually do a shout out to Joanna Page. Did you know uh, who plays Judy? Did you know about her? Did you ever watch Gavin and Stacey? 
No. I love Gavin Stacey. This sounds just, familiar, dude. though. Gavin Stacey is a Welsh sitcom mm-hmm. that she's on, and she is just as charming. And it's like, if, you, if you're if you into rewatching watching this and being like, I love Judy, you should watch Gavin Stacey because it's, it's mm. adorable. Yeah. Um, okay, so. And if we move backward, um, back to Colin, um, he is tangentially related to Peter, Juliet, and Mark, mm-hmm. which is Mark, Andrew Lincoln, Peter, Chiwetel Ejiofor, and Juliet Keira Knightley. Yep. So Peter is the groom at a wedding, and his best friend is Mark, Andrew mm-hmm. Lincoln. Some people know him as the Walking Dead guy yeah. now. Uh, referred to as Boombox slash cue cards in our cheat sheet. Well, it's good that they are specific that yeah. way. Uh, you allow me to write this down. Mm-hmm. Inappropriately. <laughs> yes. Inappropriately has a crush on well, Juliet. No, no. One can have a crush yes. on whoever they want. Inappropriately express it. Okay. Well, yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. And Juliet exactly. Kira Knightley, i.e., you know, from Pirates of the Caribbean, mm-hmm. Pride and Prejudice, being Kira Knightley. When I first, yes. well, the first time I saw Pirates of the Caribbean, I saw her. I'm like, oh my God, Winona Ryder and Jennifer Garner had a baby. Oh yeah. No, you're right. Mm-hmm. She's got that kind of, she had, she had, I, I think she's just beautiful. And, I, and she high five Natalie Portman because Natalie Portman and her look alike sometimes too. Okay, sometimes I've gotten the two confused. Well, actually, I just was about to name a movie mm-hmm. and I realized Natalie Portman's actually in it. Was it Black Swan? Knightley. It was. Oh, you want to get extra confused? <laughs> where Speaking of movies, I watch it on play. Where it's Star Wars, the you know, the Phantom yeah. Menace, where it's Natalie Portman, but it turns mm-hmm. out she has a double played by Kira Knightley. Yeah. <laughs> It's all real, people. Uh, turns out, turns out Hollywood agrees with us. Yeah, it's, conv- but, but, but anyway, I, mm-hmm. yeah, so we got that. And yes. then we have the, uh, oh, speaking of Pride and Prejudice, mm-hmm. we have at that wedding, uh, Jamie, Colin Firth, wait, no, shoot, was he at, he was, was he at the wedding or was he at the funeral? Jamie was, doesn't matter. No, he was at the wedding because that was the whole thing. He went to the wedding. Yes, because be- between the reception and the okay, yeah. Got it. So he goes to, uh, yeah, he goes to uh, Juliet well, and Peter's wedding. Yep, and this and that's how his whole story kicks off because he leaves his sick. Is it his wife or his fiance? his girlfriend? His girlfriend. Okay, his girlfriend. we don't. I, or maybe I, his 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 um, definitely signif- significant other. Yeah. of some kind. And as he is checking in to see her, um, because she she's has the sick. flu. Oh, or that's does why she? she decides not to go. Or does she? Or does she? Yeah. She does not. She, she might, but she's still cheating on him with his brother. So that's, well, you don't cheat on Mr. Darcy, okay? I, you don't. I don't even understand this woman, and I don't. I don't even want to learn her name. I don't. I don't think. But it's, luckily, we never. We do we? She's I guess pl- we probably. She, do. Well, she's not on the map, but she's played by. Uh, I think it's Sienna Gilroy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I. I just remember that because I was trying Mm -hmm. to remember everyone's names. You're so good. No, it didn't work. (laughs) Um, But in turn, he is, um, he goes away to write a book. Yes. In France? uh, Yes, in Marseille. And he, uh, he decides, he's clearly been there before. This is his regular sort of thing that he does every year Mm -hmm. or something because the proprietoress, the woman who owns the uh, chateau or whatever, or the least really cares a for it, um, yep. is like, is like, oh, you're back. Did you? I thought you were going to bring a lady, but you didn't. Well, probably the same lady. Yes. Um, and she, oh, I found someone to, you know, clean up after. And I guess she hangs around a lot while she's cleaning up because, yes, or that it's edited. Very I was well. totally thinking that. I was like, wow. I, I, Are my, you- I, I. So we have like we have somebody come once a month and yeah. like i tr- we we do not we do not interchange in any way i, I was i was she thinking like he is and i'm gone he's like i need you here for four hours a day because i drink a lot of coffee uh, and- yeah yeah it's got i'm really really messy mm-hmm. um yeah it seems like maybe she also cooks his meals me May- oh that's a good interesting that point. might be the thing yeah like and- where she just comes in and cooks the meals and and their story the involves that he is not the best at languages, but speaks English and tries to speak French. And yes. she is Portuguese. She's mm-hmm. played by Lucia Moniz. Yes. And uh, she speaks Portuguese. And their conflict is they can't really understand each other. But yes. I wrote this note down that still plausible because mm-hmm. I heard anecdotally that communication is 80% nonverbal. Oh, completely. I, as somebody who has spent time having to communicate with people, I, whose languages do, I do not speak for a period of their lives. 
It worked. What did I just say? <laughs> See, you communicated that you weren't listening. <laughs> Just kidding. No, actually, you're right. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, see? It totally works. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, this is uh, this. Uh, right. Right. And, and I mean, I feel like in general, re- like this is one of those movies where, and I know I'm not going to be able to like not do this, but trying to, the plausibility of these things is kind of beside the point but it's fun to talk about it's, but it's really fun it's, it's christmas polina it's christmas and anything all the magic happens at christmas now look no no and also it's 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 not america so it's magical it's yes it a lot of this takes place in london except for the uh, aforementioned marseille which is really de- like delightful oh, um and also milwaukee Oh, yes, yes, there's, <laughs> yes, sorry, with a bright sojourn in Milwaukee. But this is grass is always greener. Right. We think it's magical because it's London and or Europe and Colin thinks. See, we're just as like guilty of the, of the, the accent thing. Yeah. But their accents but then are Col- amazing. And Colin thinks, yeah, that yeah. Colin thinks we're exotic and well, easy. Colin the character, <laughs> not Colin first. Yes, yes. This is the confusing part with this many actors is like, you'll yes. have uh, overlap of, of names and actors. Um, And in the final couple... American. Yes. Yes. We've, uh, we've got Sarah portrayed by Laura Linney right. and her um, object of admiration, uh, infatuation. Rodrigo Santoro. And who could blame her? Carl. Carl. His name is Carl. His name is Carl with a K. Yes. Um, and he's the designer that she works with. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a bit of an Anglophile, like not a huge Anglophile, but like I have, and I have friends in Britain. Um, I've never actually been there for Christmas, but it does, it is so big. They're mm-hmm. so into it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's such a thing, like just, it's great. And I think like in most Northern countries, I think the weirdest thing about being Northern California is like, we're not really ready for, like I've always, so my theory about Christmas in Northern California is that basically it only starts to get cold and rainy right, right before Christmas. So I think that like, we're uh, still in the like turning inward, wanting to like sit alone at home with like cups of tea and kind of enjoy the rain part. Not the like, I am so sick of winter. It's still months and months and months of this. I need a holiday with lots of lights to remind me of things. So I feel I, no, I don't know. That's my experience. Well, Christmas sweaters aren't really a good idea in California. Yeah, I actually, man, it's hot. I'm wearing a Christmas sweatshirt um, because I realized that a Christmas sweater was not going to be practical. So I bought this Christmas sweatshirt. It has kittens. Um, uh, you can see a picture of that on Instagram. No, you, um, you have to do that now. Uh, yeah, now we actually have to post something. Um, so, but I've never this whole thing about you can only tell the truth in Christmas. So if any of our like <laughs> either more Anglophilic or uh, I don't know if that's a word or are uh, actually uh, British or have spent a lot of time there. Can you like please tell us if this is a real thing? Well, it, that you have to tell the truth on Christmas in, in the UK. Good Lord, I hope not. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that would be kind of, it's kind of like, it's sort of like the oh, purge, but social, no, like, like is it, is right it like, before Christmas, they have to tell each other things. Well, no, like when you get together with your family and people just start getting honest with one another, isn't that just alcohol? Yes. Okay. But there's a, you know, it's a heavy drinking culture, like most Northern cultures. No, I'm just so saying I you become like more truthful when you've had right, alcohol. Right. But like, a, yeah, but they, they seem to point to, to like, it's Christmas and you have to tell the truth or you have to like do something kind of. Uh, brave uh, is just not really a part of like American Christmas traditions. I mean, I guess like, I guess like traveling on, you know, traveling across country with small children is brave um, when you have a country as large as, as the U.S. So uh, maybe that's, maybe that's our bravery. Our bravery is traveling with toddlers on the busiest travel day of the year uh, when there's snowstorms and you have no idea if you or, and or your luggage, which is filled with presents, is going to get there. Maybe I, that's our version of brave. No, so I choose to be not brave and I'm just going to sit at home, look at the tree and put on a robe and pet my dog. I think that sounds delightful. Maybe Ryan can come. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. um, if he brings cue cards. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm imagining his cue cards. I should probably tell you this. 
Flip. <laughs> We've been married for 10 years. <laughs> Flip. I'm really cold. <laughs> Flip. Flip. Please let me in. Yes. <laughs> I bought the tree too. Flip. <laughs> I miss my dog. I like pajamas. Um, okay. Where's the so- boom box of carolers? <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to fake? We don't have a boom box anymore. I don't want Chiwetel Ejiofor to know that you're here. Go away. <laughs> I shall think we he just, would understand. Let's go into an actual Shall family. we jump into this? Okay, so fine. Here's, here's something that kind of matters. I'm getting so heated. I'm going to take off my Christmas sweatshirt. She's doing it. She's crazy. <laughs> okay, so here's, here's the thing. And then I, if you, if you had the opportunity to listen to your favorite problematics episode on Love Actually. Yeah, I actually was going to, and then I decided I, I didn't want to. You shouldn't let it like. But I'm going to. Yeah, you I shouldn't did. let it pepper your brain before. That was the thing. I'm going to do it on the way home. So they're not wrong about the following in this movie. That it's problematic? Yes. No, no, no. no <laughs> but I want to hear what they think. Well, I mean, this is just the, the broad strokes of it. Mm-hmm. But um, th- this guy, Mark, has no right to put his crush on Juliet. It, in rewatching this, I was prepared to like be fully prepared for all of this bullshit. Um, yeah. But then it's just like, oh, this isn't as, wor- as bad as I remember it. So that's okay. See, I kind of forgot how inappropriate it was for in- some reason. Inappropriate. Yeah, no, so inappropriate. You forgot how inappropriate it was? Yeah, like I was like, I don't think I was bothered. I mean, to be honest, I watched this movie on a plane. It got me through, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a long movie and it kept me entertained for the two hours and 15 minutes, which means that that was two hours and 15 minutes I did not want to chew my arm off Mm -hmm. uh, because I assumed this was on a long flight. Right. Um, So I feel like it did its job and then it kind of, you know, has... It's like, I can't say it permeated my brain in any way. Well, again, it's it's kind of like the niceness of it. And yeah. this is what worked for me. If you didn't like certain storylines, you just forgot them. That's the thing. That's it's what so I did. Well, yeah, and the Mark... Okay, so focusing on the Juliet and Mark... Okay, should... Did you, do you want to oh, so get through? Oh, so inappropriateness, yeah. fat shaming, um, and holy, also the dynamics yes. of bosses and power dynamics in terms of like, you know, political slash... Um, it, fortunately a lot of that is in the other stories, so yes. we can get into it in detail there, but no, right. that's all there. We recognize that it happened, but I don't want to get into it too much because, um, yeah, I don't want to right now. It's Christmas. No. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, you can easily, and, and, and also Colin's a dick. They do such a good job The the, 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 uh, your favorite problematic podcast that I, even though I haven't heard it, I'm going to assume they'll, they'll just like rock that. Oh, um, but something that they did bring up, mm-hmm. which actually comes into play with my whole what happens next thing, um, they thought that as well. And so what I thought was going to happen the first time I ever saw this movie, I'm going to mm-hmm. make that as it, that's what actually happened in the future. Go on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ah. We'll get there. Um, so so I... Mark is in love with Juliet. Juliet's marrying Peter. Uh, Mark is trying to be the good friend by, he actually calls it self-preservation. Yeah. And it's not so terrible. So like Juliet wanted photos of no she wanted good video of the wedding because the videographer that they hired apparently there was like a weird turquoise tint to everything yeah so she comes hunting for him and he's always been like standoffish of her he does this beautiful surprise at their wedding and that even that's uh, yeah even, and so there yeah there's this whole like sort of back thing of that yeah. him doing like of him playing pranks and doing elaborate things and sadly one of them involves brazilian hookers one that turned out male. turned out to be male, and I'm just like, yeah. okay, well, that's another thing for your fave. It's problematic, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, in turn, um, he does this nice surprise for them at the wedding. I don't know if that's really a prank so much as just like yeah. surprising well, them with a the musical. They were like, you, you know, they were all like, they kept joking, like being like, oh God, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You're gonna do some like prank, but actually, he did a really nice thing, which is that he had. Um, a choir coming. I had a choir and then send them musicians off musicians mm-hmm. and uh like a full band and they played uh All You Need Is Love. Mm-hmm. A rather baroque version of it. Yeah. And then as their story like is spliced through, you find out that Mark's been a little bit standoffish of Juliet, you know, it's like, well, we know you don't like her. He's like, that's not, I'm always nice, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, wait, does this guy have resting bitch face or something? Yeah. What's great is that Sarah, Laura Linney's character at the Mm -hmm. wedding says like, you know, tell me the truth. Do you love him? Yeah. Yeah. And that she's like, no, no, no. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't remember what happens here. Wow. Um, but then I was like, then I remembered him. I remember the cue cards. Yep. Because, you know, it, that's like one of those played and re- over and over again. And I remember kind of the thing. first time seeing it, I thought it was just sweet. 
But yeah, re- me too. But rewatching it now, what I thought was even more effective was when Juliet looks at the video that he that he took at the wedding and sees that it's just her. Yeah. She comes to the realization that he is infatuated with her, and he calls it like self preservation, and he leaves. And then once again, shout out to the soundtrack. You have. Um, I don't remember the name of the song, but it's like hauntingly oh, it's, penetrative. It's the um, uh, it's Dido. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't rest. I won't sleep until you're resting, resting here, here with here me. With me. Or here, here with me. Here with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we did it again. Um, <laughs> but but it's so effective though, and that just and just the way he just kind of turns, goes back, moves forward. Mm-hmm. Music starts to swell. He turns and goes. Yeah, because basically he like watches her, and she's like, "This is." You see her like slowly realize, mm-hmm. like way after the audience does, I think, mm-hmm. um, like what it is. I think she's just so relieved that there's video. Yeah. Um, and, and she's trying to make nice. Yeah. I know you don't like me. Yeah. And she's like, I'm actually, you know, I, I have terrible taste in pie, but I'm really nice. And then she <laughs> realizes what's happening. She's like, she says something and he's like, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I have lunch, uh, it's far away and just like, basically it's like, you can show yourself out. You can show yourself out. out, yeah. Um, and then the next time you, s- yeah, and so, right. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, is that's it. When you really look at these stories as a whole, like, re-edit it, it's just like, wow, that's really short. And That's the thing, I realized I was like, trying to talk about yeah. it is kind of, I mean, that's, even though, I mean, we do, it, two parts makes sense, but like, yeah, there's not much to go on in a weird way because you it's, really, like, it'd be interesting to actually time, like, their, the characters, each of the scenes with their actual time together. Well, if it's two time hours, together. if it's two hours and 10 minutes, 16, and, and there's, there's nine couples and then you divide and then you carry the one. <laughs> Help me out here. <laughs> I wonder if they, they all get equal time. I don't think so. Doubt it highly. Well, also um, it's interspliced. Oh, it turns out there was actually an, a, a tenth. There was going to be a tenth, but they There was going to be 14. Really? But they couldn't film all of the, they filmed one. Yeah, I remember the tenth. Okay. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. We'll never so, get there. Uh, no. Um, um, so uh, who next? Uh, let's see. We, so we've, we briefly, I feel like we briefly touched. Do we want to get... Um, do we want to just start doing the uh, what happens? I don't think we barely covered everyone, period. Yeah. <laughs> and yet. Oh, wait. Do, do we want to do it for Mark and Peter or for just like everyone? I think we have to go through everyone. Oh, well, well, no. I'm just saying like, okay, so Colin and John and Judy. I don't think we got into detail much. Oh, we John didn't actually. Hey, if we're going to give Mark and Peter and Juliet that much, we need yeah. to give love to the actual couples that I appreciate more. Oh, my God. Yes. Okay. So, are this so Judy and John? How do you feel? I will say that Judy and John is my favorite story. Oh, they are the sweetest. They are. There is so much of genuine uh, nervousness and just talking and just like it's so great because it's just most of the love stories you see with just like the nervousness of asking a girl out on a date Mm -hmm. or meeting somebody in a regular work circumstances. The only difference is that they happen to be nude. Yeah. So they're doing a, they're like body doubles for. Ryan and I talked about this. Were they body doubles or were they stand-ins? And I think they're just stand-ins. Right. Yeah. They must. Yeah. For lighting. For lighting. Yeah. For lighting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what movie was like a very high, if it was porn, it's very high end. I don't think it was porn. No. No, I just think it was one of those movies that had had a lot of low sex. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And so most of the time they're doing, but then like, I guess what's weird about the stand-ins is like, would they like kind of the humor is that they, they're, they're in these positions, excuse me, that look like they're having sex, you know, but they're like just there for like lighting mm-hmm. and like uh talking about their experiences in other yeah. movies right but it's like weird because i'm like well i don't think it's necessary I, I wouldn't think it would be necessary somebody correct me like to actually impersonate having sex wouldn't it be enough to have them standing there and then they can adjust their light well i think they're looking at the lighting involved when the movements are happening so you you understand the importance of glare. We were just having that conversation earlier. True. Yeah. This, okay. This is a professional film. Oh, I'm set. sorry. I'm doing that thing I said I wouldn't do, which is trying to make make this logical. What makes me sad is that in television versions, this entire storyline is cut. 
totally. Oh, you're right. I would imagine. Why would why would why would That's they keep it? That's maybe why I don't remember it as much because it doesn't really get discussed. But they are like they're first off, they're the two that you actually see getting to know each other mm-hmm. in Neat. Uh, without much um, like everyone else. There's a lot of friction, you know. Like there's history. Like, there's history. There's either history or. Or like in the, say, in the case of uh, well, Natalie so, and um, the prime minister. We'll get to that. Yeah, they, they, they do spend time. They do get to know each other, but it's different. Like, well, well, Jamie and Aurelia, they're brand new. Uh, yes. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, technically, Colin okay. and how his... about this? They spend the most time. Mm-hmm. The people, the, the, the couples that get to know each other during the Christmas movie, Judy and John spend the most time actually talking. Uh, out of anybody ver- verbally, yes, like together, communicating. Well, don't forget, no, no, Jamie and Aurelia, the non verbal 80%. That's true. I'm gonna, I'm so, gonna, yeah. yeah, no, so you're slowly gonna see <laughs> this is really difficult, like depending on how much I defend it, <laughs> yeah, versus you're like, not defend it, but it's there, it's you get to really, you get to see them, um, mm-hmm. c- you know, kind of getting to These, know each other. So, Judy and John, you see them bloom and blossom so much and yet not all that much it's just a very beginning of a relationship adorableness yeah yeah yeah, it is (laughs) it's super like chatty and um yeah they just like i don't know they just they have a nice energy together like Mm -hmm. they fall in real fast yep Yep. And, uh, and it's, I think they're sort of meant to be kind of comic relief in a way. Cause it's like the ridiculousness, but I, they're, different, they're there's, super sweet. Plus I love those two actors. There's different versions of ridiculousness. Right. So like, um, there's Pratt fall, which I'm just like, and then there's like the embarrassingness of it. Like, right. Yeah. The awkward. awkward yeah. 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 The, uh, well, uh, another note. Um, what is it? Yeah. What about love is that it's just about embarrassing yourself. Mm. this movie really relies on that. Yeah. And that's what I think is kind of great about Judy and John is that they're in a position that lends itself to be embarrassing. And they're just like, no, no, this is just work. Yeah, exactly. But instead, that's a, that's, oh, that's a really good observation. Yeah. But instead he's just embarrassed about like, you know, just, um, this is great. I'm so glad you said yes to the date. Cause I was just like really nervous. Yeah, exactly. And, like, and at the time she is definitely, um, yeah. Riding him naked. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just so sweet. It's so sweet. I, I love that your favorite, your favorite uh, storyline is the one that has the most nudity. What's your point? <laughs> I just, it's like, it's a, it's a bit of a twist. Okay. Faces up here, Polina. Up here, Polina. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Up here. <laughs> I, I love these two. I just, as I said, like, I think Joanna Page is, is, is super charming and I, I love think... John um, and very funny. And I've fallen quote unquote. Like you're uh, gonna love Gavin and Stacey. No, 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 no. I have parasocial relationship fallen in love, in love with Martin Freeman in many iterations of his mm. characters. Got me too. I can't help it. <laughs> you're very cute. Well, maybe not as a hobbit, but he did okay. I don't know. Still, <laughs> Martin Freeman. It just his 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 uh, his he trans his sort of his powers transcend any possible. Uh, place you put up he's just super great Mm -hmm. um okay so we love judy and john um where are we on uh jamie and aurelia well again there's a love origin story happening before our eyes Mm -hmm. um he gets cheated on so instantly i feel this whole like sadness of like he should be the happy like it's like the john cusack better off dead character i want him to be happy happy. and and find someone who will be good to him and not Mm -hmm cheat on him with his brother but you know he meets this person and there's like not much happening there Mm -hmm, but again mm -hmm. with a built-in Colin Firth I'm like rooting for him right oh I know yeah I couldn't not I mean yeah I think of like I mean this is kind of the magic Colin Firth that he can he can essentially carry this off and you're like I'm in because okay so he's pretty embarrassing yeah well, first off, he's terrible at speaking. Like he's and he, he always kind of jokes. He's he's a so he's a murderer. Uh, he's a, a he's like, a murderer. He's a murderer. Um, yeah. So uh, no, he he's a, a he's an well, he's an know. author of murder of murder mysteries. I I'm think gonna he's guess. just writing a book. Period. Like no, I I get the feeling this is his like he 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 because he goes there on the regular, right? Mm-hmm. My, my, this is my version was he is just, he's a mystery novelist and this is what he does. Like he, mm. somebody says, oh, you're so-and-so like they knew who he was. 
So I think he's like a, a you know, he's probably like a relatively well-known author because somebody recognizes him at one point. I understood it as, I don't know what he does, but he's finally getting away and he's choosing this place that he goes to all the time to finally write that novel he keeps talking no, about. No, 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 because it. he talked, like the way that he, no, I see, I completely disagree. One, somebody recognizes him in the, I forget, it was at the, at the very end, um, like in the scene where they all like, uh, they all end up at the- um, At the airport? I think it was at the airport, but at some point somebody recognizes him and I wish I'd written it down. Yes, you should. Um, but also just like if he goes there all the, that makes sense if he goes there all the time, this is his sort of writer's retreat. And, you know, I mean, he's a mystery novelist. Like you have to come out with a lot of books, you know, it's like a once a year, twice a year thing. For somebody who's talking about how like, you know, wow, this book is really shit. And well, that's the other thing is it's genre fiction. So I think if it was like, a really, you know, like finishing the novel, he wouldn't be so cavalier about the fact that it's shit. Because at one point he's like, and he even says he's have like, you, have you met a first time anxious writer? Well, but he, he's not bothered by it, I guess. Like he's so like, yeah, it's shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? He's not like, oh my God, I've been trying these, you know, I'm trying to express what I really feel in his shit. He's more like, uh, yeah, this is what I have to do. And it's, like, and this one isn't going great. Mm. That's why I don't think it's that he's writing the great American novel. Oh, I didn't say great American I novel. Mean, not, I mean, obviously not the great American novel because he's not Because he's American. not from America. But, like, I don't think he's writing his, like, heart novel. I think he's, he's like, this is my job. Is I'm a mid-level mystery writer. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Agree to disagree. Okay. All right. Um, so it, they get to know each other. They have their own, like, oops, I'm sorry, me mm-hmm. cleaning up after you resulted in your copies going into the, mm-hmm. you know, the water. Yeah. Also, I would like to think a professional does make copies. It doesn't say, oh, God, I should really make copies. Yeah, I think that's, you're see, that's, right. That's, that's yeah, why, yeah, so that's why yeah. I was thinking but that. But nothing in this book is very realistic. Like, the fact that the prime minister. I mean, the movie. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Did I say book? Okay. Yes. Nothing Um, in his book makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll get to it later, but there's just like a lot of things that don't quite, there's no logic in this movie. You have to spend a shit ton of logic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, his time at the chateau and or his cabin or whatever. Yeah. And you see them kind of go back and forth between he says something, she says something. And I think what got to me at this is just like, Oh, this is written. You know, when, when two people can't understand each other and ha ha, he says one thing and then she says a different thing, but it skews on being more beneficial for her versus, you know, mm-hmm. oh my God, if this thing works out, you know, maybe, you know, you know, I hope this is really good. He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I think, I think this is absolutely terrible, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh my God, you know, uh, God, oh my God, is that eels? Quiet. You're disturbing the eels, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing when they're in the water. So it's fine to a point, but the fact that it's happening every line I, I, I became kind of irritated. It got a little irritated. Yeah. It became I, too cutesy. I see what you mean. and I, But I, there is there's something really charming about using the, using the fact that they know that the other person can't understand what they say. And they, mm-hmm. and they, so it's like, a, it's, it's almost like talking to someone in, you know, in an airplane or. And you can't hear them? No. Like and you, and you that you nodding. say anything and you can kind of say anything and you're safe. Some people right. are still, are, are pretty, you know, isn't that the whole plot of Fight Club? You're on the plane with somebody, you think you can say anything to them? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But Not I mean, just, or like strangers, you know, you like, it's just whenever you meet someone when you're totally like, yeah, it's like you meet strangers and you suddenly start talking about things that you don't talk mm-hmm. about to your, with your like. Yeah. It's really hard. That's when I started cheating on my husband. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh. Anyways, sometimes I just talk to people. Anyways, my bus is here, so I gotta go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But just, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, so at one point, they both confess their love with, but knowing that the other person can't can't understand, which actually I really like, like, I got a little tired of it until, like, that scene actually, like, kind of, I felt was really. Oh, magical. Are you just like that little girl? I hate Uncle Jamie. <laughs> um, no, no, I love <laughs> Uncle Jamie. 
<laughs> oh, whoops. I got there. <laughs> I don't really. I mean, who doesn't this, the, you know, the grand romantic gesture happens in the form of him going out to wherever she is mm. knocking on the door, not knowing the language and like, I would like, but he actually, the grand romantic gesture is him learning Portuguese. Well, or, I, I mean, I mean, there's a running through a airport scene. So we'll, we'll yeah, have to talk But like, about actually that's when I was like, Oh, the gesture, oh, the was, fact that they both, they both learn try learned because each other's language. Yeah, they're trying to learn because it's a it's 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 a it's only a few. It's like a week. It's a very short period of time. Were they together? Oh, like between him oh, leaving yeah, and yeah, her, yeah, because yeah. remember he's coming home for Christmas. Right now, I remember. Yeah, I thought so you meant the whole time. Yeah, like and so time. it's like it's like the you know he does it re- he instantly. Mm-hmm. Like they're trying to learn all this Portuguese. Well, he's, in well, like he's a learning week. it in yeah, real yeah, exactly. in every moment that he could. He's Christmas shopping while learning yeah so that's kind of nice um so that's sweet yep and he he goes and he proposes very in 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 not well portuguese not well portuguese not well portuguese yeah. not <laughs> <laughs> i did it um yeah and she says yes in bad english um but i mean i you know those like gets a point across mm-hmm. um it's you know a Languages are difficult and the informalities and form, like, you know, the difference between formal and informal, which is always like the funnest part of like the, when people learn a different language is like conjugation. No, like the four, you know, the blending of the formal and informal, like you don't always really get it. Oh no. No. And so it's a real, it's interesting. Like, uh, yes. Plus, um, when I watched them come together, like, no, they went back to the nonverbal and they kissed each other. Right. But this was my sad observation about that mm-hmm. scene. Um, when he, when the sister kissed him and when the father kissed him, it looked more natural <laughs> when those two were kissing. And I'm like, Oh, that's not good. <laughs> All right. So Sarah and Carl, Oh, Sarah and Carl. Oh my God. Do you need a minute? Oh, they just like, Oh, they break my heart. I, well, I think that's the point of their storyline. I know. I know. It's, I mean, the whole thing is manipulative. Like the whole movie is the, there's, it's so obvious what they want you to feel and how you're supposed to react. And when they're both topless, still cry. Also manipulative. Oh, that was just treat. Um, (laughs) but, (laughs) um, I read in trivia that Laura Linney who plays Sarah was Mm -hmm. also pissed off that when that scene happened and the phone rang and she decided to turn away from Carl to, to talk to her brother on the phone. She yes. was upset about that too. I, yeah, it's upsetting. And the first time, okay, it's the second time where I just felt like I was just a dagger. Like their whole like thing is like at first when I heard about it, first I was, so you find out about it because um, Harry, who owns this design, um, uh, this design firm. I don't think it's a design firm. I think it's some sort of nonprofit. No, it's a design firm. Okay. It's an agency. Well, an agency is a nonprofit. An agency is, um, in the nonprofit world, you can also call a service provider an agency. Okay. Um, the reason I mentioned that is because there is now it could go either way because the fact that they have this like poster of a woman and underneath that it, it says help bear their load or help shelter them Mm -hmm. something to that effect. I'm like, so either they're a nonprofit or they're doing this campaign for a nonprofit. I can't tell. Right. Right. I mean, Carl is the creative is a designer and a creative director. That's why I think I thought it was a design agency and they have like a fancy Christmas party at a, like I've, I've, I mean, I mean, I've done I mean, all I of these for a job. nonprofit and we had, you we had, had fancy Christmas parties. Mm-hmm. So, and we also had a marketing and creative team. Yeah, I so. guess you're right. I so don't know, coin but, flip. Yeah. Um, but it just like seemed like that was their, uh, focus somehow. But, um, uh, I think that anyway, but it's, there's something so, so basically he's like, he calls her into her, his office and tells her, we're talking to Harry. Yeah. Harry calls Sarah into his office and was like, you're in love with so-and-so. No, and he asks her. Yeah, that's true. But I think he, he asked tells. Well, like, like if she said, no, I'm not, she'd be, he'd be like, no, you are. Well, it, it's helpful for our podcast because Sarah tells us exactly when she fell in love with him because she's like, mm-hmm. oh, how long have you been with us? Oh, two years, four months. And. 
um, three hours. Yeah. And how long have you been with the car? Oh, two years, three months, and one hour and 30 minutes. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So he's so 30 minutes in. He's a poker. Because I think she even said she, two hours. She said two hours. Well, it was 30 minutes less than Yeah, yeah, the exactly. Time That's what I mean. Like, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's like in so instantly, I think, is the... <laughs> no, 30 minutes, I mean... Yeah. I mean, the fact, like, maybe she ran into him in the first minute and a half but uh mm-hmm. yeah so i think like uh so she's been lusting out she's been you know quote unquote in love she's been in love with him for over three years mm-hmm. and hasn't done anything about it and everybody knows that's what he basically says he knows carl knows carl's obviously also in, like also has feelings for her well then he's an asshole too right both of them are super shy <laughs> And they finally get together and they instantly like, cause they're and they dance and then they go back to her house and I had a, I had a wonder if she purposefully didn't try to pursue it because she knew that she couldn't have a relationship. Yeah. I wonder actually. based off of her responsibilities. Right. But she can, I guess that's his point. Well, she can have both. Well, this is the part where I say, you know what, Harry, <laughs> right. You know, no one asked you and you think you're doing her a favor. It's, yeah, Carl. Well, Oh, yeah. no, no, no. I'm telling Harry. He needs to oh, mind his own yeah, effing yeah. business. Well, yeah, that's, well, that was my, well, so, like, just, that whole office is really inappropriate. And, like, but just all, all, in all sorts of ways. But, um, so many, so many slow songs during the Christmas party <laughs> just seems like a recipe for disaster. Well, w- there was horrible DJs was a motif in this movie as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so, yes, I mean, that's inappropriate, and we'll get into, you know, Harry's whole inappropriate thing. But, like, I think where I also, I feel like, um, maybe Carl, I like the sort of, pa- like, I feel like they really focus on the passiveness of Sarah, but mm-hmm. actually I like, they kind of don't focus on the passiveness of Carl. That's what I was talking about. Right. I mean, what you said, like, is a really good point. Like even after that incident, like he's also an idiot, but okay. They work together. If you, if you get that wrong, it's horrible. But if Carl knows and everyone knows he's not even having to put himself out there. Right. She's the one in the realm of uncertainty. But the minute that also has he seen himself? I know. Look at him. Oh my God. I mean, it's, it's Rodrigo Santoro, which you mentioned right, before. Right, his name. I'm sorry. And he was actually, it, uh, he was in 300. He was in Westworld. He and was Xerxes. Lost. Yes. And he, was his among name? Among other things. Pablo or Paolo in Lost? Doesn't matter. I, yeah. Um, I think it's, pa- I think it's Paolo. Okay. Um, Anyway, and Hector in Westworld. Yes, and Hector in Westworld. And so, actually, I was joking. I was like, I was like, God, that guy looks so familiar. That guy looks so familiar. And then he like took his shirt off. I was like, Oh, Hector in Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Ah. Oh. Anyway, yeah, it's like, and plus because I love those two. So it's Hector. I mean, he's just he's so beautiful. Um, but like, I Wait, love that- Laura Linney so much. She- Laura Linney is one of my favorite actresses of all time. She just I think she's great as this character as well. She is. Um, And she's never not great. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to put that out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it makes me mad that not that she did it the first time, but that she did it the second time. But then afterwards that Carl like isn't willing, like that, like at the end of the movie, you see basically him walking up to her desk Mm -hmm. And being like, um, they're alone in the office, like, so Merry Christmas. So, yeah. And they both kind of like, neither of them make a, you know, say he, anything. But I'm kind of like, he should have, he should have like, in in the mid, middle of those, of those two incidents, the Christmas party where they almost have sex mm-hmm. and the other one, there should have been some sort of like he needed to step up he needed to step up thank you you're right you're right that's what i'm trying to say like and just be like look i can you know if because he's obviously also lonely yeah so it's not like it's like well you know what this person is too complicated according to their story it seems like he's this is this is it so i just like yeah, I feel like I, I would have liked an edit where, you know, Carl tries a little harder. Yeah, I agree. 
and tries to understand. And like, cause he does say at one point, he's like, is it going to help? That's and he's very kind about it, but I'm also like, no, no, that's, that's a little early. Like, dude, you don't know her story at all. Additionally, dick move. Right. Mm -mm. Not cool. Um, I mean, it, it, it's real. It's yeah. what he's saying is real, but it's just like, God, you don't know each other. And you don't know anything about this whole and, story. And also, it just sounds like you're upset because you're not having sex. I mean, I do feel like, okay, they had this, like, if they've been waiting so long to be together, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, here is the moment. And that's when I say, what's another five minutes? Yeah. If you've been waiting that point. long. Yeah. I'm going to win um, this one. <laughs> And I mean, I guess it was like she answered the phone, but she was like, oh, I'm I want to come over like or I'll come over. And yeah. And then you get started yeah. five minutes later. I mean, they're yeah, maybe they're just like so painfully shy that they can't even express like, you know, the reality of their lives to each other. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I just found it um, heartbreaking. And yet I loved I loved everything, you know, until then. And then um, and then, you you know, she. And she's like, my parents are no longer alive. Yep. Like, yep. it's I mean, just the it's two of them. Lot. Yeah. Just the two of them. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. That yeah. made me sad. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's okay. The movie did it. I didn't do it. Yeah. No, you did not. All right. Um, so sadly we were left with, um, my least favorite story arc, which is Colin and his quest for American, um, uh, boobs, I, I yeah, guess. I don't know. Uh, which he went. So, okay. So basically Colin spends, so you get introduced to Colin essentially being a terrible caterer. Oh no, no. He, he, he's delivering sandwiches mm -hmm. to the office and then, and then hits on all of the women mm -hmm. while he's delivering sandwiches. Like, and then at the wedding, you know, he, Oh, he accidentally insulted the caterer. What a, what a, right. Total, it's like, dude, horrible. you're the cater, you're the cater waiter. Just like do your job. Yeah. Um, and he, um, but it's like, he takes every, you never see him like go on a date and be a sweet guy and like, or just be a, just a, nor, you know, have a, not have a pickup line. Like he calls himself the God of sex. Yeah. It is gross. It's gross. And then, so then he goes to the U.S. and he basically is like, at in any bar, are women more attractive than uh, the ones that he encounters? Than the ones that he encounters in in England. Now, and so then, but he tests this there by basically he buys a a ticket and goes to uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, M Milwaukee, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and asks the cab driver to take him to any bar. Mm -hmm. And he walks in and at first it's not looking too promising until no, it looked promising. Well, like, like, like 14 seconds. Yeah. The first 10 seconds, they try to make you think, and I was like, Oh yeah, this is how it's going to work. And then, and this is one of the storylines I completely put out of my mind. Go on. Then he meets these three um, women, one of which is, uh, one of which is January Jones, was played by January Jones, mm -hmm. who, uh, I was a huge Madman fan and I was like, oh my God, January Jones is yeah. here. Whereas the fans of 24, there was Alicia Cuthbert. Right. Yep. Um, and then, uh, the third girl in the bar, I believe it's, I'm going to try this, Ivana Milcevic. No, it's, uh, it's, I would say it's, uh, um, Milicevic. Well, then we'll go with your pronunciation. Yeah, just based on. Yeah. Um, but that's uh, not the the whole point of Chevich, this. Chevich, probably. What 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 is actually painful is listening to the dialogue of these things. Oh my god! Just yeah. Like you know, oh, you should come back with us. You know, but we only have one bed and we can't afford pajamas. And so I thought this was a fantasy oh. the entire time. I thought this was a dream, and and he was going to wake up, and. He was going to wake up and be like, oh, actually I went to Wisconsin. I ended up in a bar and, um, you know, like it was just a bar, you know, f full of guys and some, you know, some, some women that were not also not going to be interested in. Him. But no, this just became this like weird f fantasy sequence. And, and don't forget, um, Harriet still oh, has to arrive. That's the thing. And then they're like, they refer to oh, her as we, the sexy one, the sexy. Yeah. And they're all like gorgeous. And in the middle of winter wearing like, you know, rather revealing tops. So I'm going to jump in when you said you thought that this was a fantasy. I thought they were going to rob him. 
That would have been a fantasy of mine. Yeah. Well, see, it kind of makes sense, though, in that, hey, here is a, you know, very naive person who thinks he can just wander in and just like, hey, everyone, I have an accent. Right. Worship me. Yeah. And like, yeah. And because it's not like you don't, you're not like, oh, beforehand, you're not like, oh, Colin is this really sweet guy who just can't seem to catch a break. He's totally like he's just awful he's entitled yeah like he just he's delivering sandwiches and he's basically hitting on every woman i'm like they're they're working they're trying to get their jobs done like and we're not talking like little like hey nice top or whatever like no it's hello my future wife exactly like just creepy creepy terrible stuff that like isn't cute upsetting so and then, and then, so at the end of the movie, they, you know, they're at Heathrow mm-hmm. and he comes. And so he comes back with Harriet, who is wearing a gigantic, like a gigantic red, red, like cowboy novelty hat. cowboy hat, mm-hmm. not like a real cowboy hat. It is. I just want to remind people it is winter in Wisconsin, not a place known for people wearing cowboy hats. One, mm-hmm. two. She's like, they're, you know, she's like wearing just like a tank top basically on the plane, like no sweater. I don't know. I'm always cold. So this is, I always notice this stuff. Um, and then she, br- he brings as a favor, brings a friend, uh, Carla, who is played by Denise Rich- Richards. And Harriet is Shannon Elizabeth. Yep. Yeah. Interestingly, she's, she's apparently from Texas. That's why she's got the hat on. Right. But, but like, w- she's flying in a gigantic, like, this is what she needs to take for a trip. It's like a gigantic cowboy hat. Like, I'm like, oh, it's so we remember she's an American? Mm-hmm. Okay, just checking. It's still in the fantasy? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, I just found this whole, like, line so, so, so upsetting. I did, it just I kind did. of ruined it for me. I, I like it. his friend Tony, and I want him to have you know i want more tony tony was cool yeah tony was cool yeah he was a guy who was trying to get colin to be reasonable right to calm the hell down right he was like trying to he was trying to he was trying to to remind him of like trying Mm -hmm. to get him back in the real world like dude and he actually does his job on the set yes yes very nice guy watching true love blossom right I think that's the second time I've said that about you. Are. You really love them. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I believe we've covered these couples. Right. And, and the actuality of what happened in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so for an easy pass, the whole, when did they fall in love? Well, Sarah, we actually have a 30 minute mark. Yeah. Of- <laughs> right. We know. Um, would you, do you s- think Carl like also fell in love at first sight? I don't give a crap about Carl anymore. <laughs> Carl says Diana. He had his chance. <laughs> he messed it up. He had like three years worth of chances, and then he had like an ultimate chance where we were all watching what was happening, and he still blew it. But I'd say he's been infatuated with her for a while as mm-hmm. well. Yep. I agree. Okay. Uh, Jamie and Aurelia, were you talking about the, the, the big romantic gesture? That was the gesture, but would you say when they decided to make the gesture, that's when they fell in love with each other? Oh, God, no. Oh, I'm listening then. Really, you think it was when Jamie and Aurelia are the is it's uh, uh, the column for the the uh, can't the story speak the storyline that said yeah took place in Marseille. Um, yeah, no, I think I mean he obviously fell in love with her. So I kind of got the sense that it was like there was some from his perspective there was some at first sight. Okay, but then I think it's. Um, because it's just odd to fall in love with somebody that you're not like, you don't really see them interacting except around the house. But I mean, if you're going to believe their story, there's just something about, um, uh, like if you're going to believe their story (laughs) non-cynically, there's just something about like the, their comfort level with each other. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I bet you it was like maybe a few days in, you oh. know, where like okay. he, and you don't see it. And then, but then 
Okay, they, they have a scene where basically she goes after his his papers mm-hmm. and she basically strips down to her underwear and jumps into a lake and then they're all shocked that it's cold, which is weird because it's December. Um, but it's funny. Yes. Uh, and And so you have like a long thing where you slowly watch her do it. And so... I guess them. It's supposed you're supposed to think that's when they fall in love, but I don't. Or he falls in love with her, but I actually think it's like a slow thing over time. Of like, you know, it's almost like like this person's smell feel smells like home kind of feeling. Oh, back to John yeah. Cusack movies. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Yeah, that there's something like we're just they're doing stuff together. Or just there being in the same space um, Mm -hmm. suddenly felt more comfortable than it, you know, than it would. So I think like, uh, I don't know when she falls in love with him, but I'm going to kind of, it doesn't seem to be instantaneously. Oh, I wouldn't think so. But I'm going to kind of guess the same thing for her. I'm going to assume that with him, actually, we'll just go with the same time here. Mm -hmm. Um, It was... The bonding after getting out of the lake situation, mm. and then when they're he's driving her home again, and they actually are having that conversation where they're confessing to each other, but they can't understand each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. I because yeah. there's a tiny, tiny chance that they might understand each other, and they're opening up right. their hearts to each other. Right, because they're they're kind of seeing, you know, it's the face as you said, like it's the facial expression, body language, body language. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she's actually the brave one because she kisses him. Yes. When they're saying goodbye. Didn't remember that. Yeah. She's, mm-hmm. she, she kisses him and then walks away and he just stands there again. Yeah. I mean, really could have saved himself uh, an entire trip. trip to I do really appreciate with him when at the end he was like, you can live anywhere. Oh. Like you can live at either of these places. Okay, so I like moving that. on. Well, what's hard about that is that who we have left is Peter Mark Juliet. Right. And that happened at some point that we'll never know. Yes. So do you just want to walk, I just, yeah. walk yeah, away yeah, from yeah. that? Let's walk away. Let's drop uh, that one. Colin, and that's just... Oh, yeah. I mean... Well, can I use that as my segue into what happens next? Yes. Well, in my world... They are going to rob him. Good. <laughs> but Harriet and Carla are more the long con. Mm-hmm. But that makes it tricky because now Carla is involved with Tony, and I don't want bad things to happen to Tony. No, no, I like Tony. So what's going to happen is, is that Harriet is in it for the long con. Carla didn't know that Harriet was in it for the long con. And it turns out Colin doesn't have anything. So they decide to use this scenario to get a free trip to England. Right. Yeah. So that's Harriet's long con. Carla goes there. Carla decides to stay with Tony. Well, I think Carla, because Tony, Tony basically uh, introduces Carla to a, uh, a kind of an acting career. Like, oh! I think she starts with a body double, but then everyone's like, she's like, oh, I need a stand in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we, uh, so we need a stand in. So, I think that actually they do have, I think I'm just going to go where they stay together. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony and Carla. Right. <laughs> yes. But we're, Harry and Colin, like, cause they're going to realize they've actually nothing in common and she's kind of a brat, but yeah, she like, well, she's no. like, she's like, she experiences it. They part maybe Colin, because basically Harriet does somehow figure out how to get money from Colin. Mm hmm. Um, not really sure how, hadn't really thought, haven't, haven't really gotten that far, but she basically, then she realizes that she can do that. And so she, uh, I just want Colin to learn his lesson. Well, <laughs> I don't sad, really care how. The sad reality is Colin is not going to learn his lesson, but Harriet, out of respect for Carla decides, oh, I'm just going to break up with Colin. I'm going to end this whole thing. Got it. And then and I'm going to go back. But Carla's yeah, like, Carla actually, stays. I like it here. Yeah. No, I like, I like. Being here with Tony. Yeah. And this is, I, I was never part of your scheme. Yeah. I, I, you, I'm just here. I'm just here because, um, okay. Yeah. All right. Because <laughs> uh, I wanted a trip. Now, Judy and John. Yeah. They're just like, they're gonna, they're just happy. They're just so cute. They're so cute. They're gonna, and they, so they get married mm-hmm. at the end. They're going off on their honeymoon and they're so excited. They're gonna maintain their careers. Totally. Yeah. No, I think they're gonna do something like, you know, I think they're going to do something else. I think they're both going to try to find one of them. I think is, I think Judy, Judy may, um, 
you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe she wants to like direct or something. Mm -hmm. You know, I just feel like I just, I want good things for them. Oh, I think maintaining your career is, is, yeah. is perfectly fine. But after a while, it's going to get a little dull, you know, just being a stand-in. I, I mean, I grew up in a, I, I suppose a lot of people may try to use stand-in as an opportunity to get other work. So fine, mm-hmm. I'm going to uh, say that she begins voice acting. There we go. She does have a great voice. Mm-hmm. There's that. And then he will star in a Marvel movie. <laughs> or. <laughs> nope, Marvel. <laughs> you're, you're Marvel. Nope, Marvel. I'm a, I'm a Dr. Watson kind of girl. Nope, Marvel. Um, <laughs> no, he's going to star in it. Um, okay, so. Good job, John. Yeah. She will have the steady paycheck. He will right. have the one catapulting thing that mm-hmm. will actually not make it go, which is yeah, good. Yeah, but they're always going to have each other. Like, there's the, now they have, they basically, they have this, like, they mm-hmm. have the net, the emotional net, which will make, you know, the hard work of acting and the constant rejection just something that makes it so they come back to yeah, each other. Exactly. They're so good. They're so good. They're so good. Um, I have a side question. Yeah. So I went with Colin and Judy mm-hmm. first. Because have you heard of Red Nose actually? No. So there's a sequel to all of this, but not all of the couples. I don't I, I, I wanted mm. to, I wanted to bring this up on air because I didn't want to ask you beforehand. Yeah. Because now we have to go into this whole before sunrise cutting edge scenario. Okay. Because this thing is actually, I've, I've never heard of Red Nose Day before this. Okay. So do you, are you familiar with it? Uh, Red Nose Day, it's, some, it's, um, it has to do, it's a, uh, what's it called? It's a charity thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fundraiser. Yeah. Um, I'm not too familiar with it, but apparently a I large apparently portion of the cast, the director and the writer all came back together to say what happened to all of these characters 13 years later. Oh, really? Uh-huh. But they, they didn't cover Colin. They don't cover Judy and John. Mm. But they do cover Mark, Peter, Juliet, Jamie Aurelia, and s- technically Sarah. Right. Um, in, in just the U- United States version of it, not in the UK version of it. Okay. Yeah. So th- w- then I need to ask you, is this canon? Because you don't know it exists. No, I don't think this movie. I just like, well, for me, I do, well, first off, I only care about canon about things I actually care about. How is so this it's remotely not, fair? We established precedent. I well, okay. I feel like um, the born I, identity. I mean, first off, they did it because they had to, which to me is like, well, not had to, but they did it for this. Like, it wasn't to make the movie. It was for like a charity thing. Mm-hmm. So I kind of feel like it's it's sort of like when we when we have sequel. Like I feel like um, like a Before Sunrise is a series of films that were like kind of always going to be there and are actually like conceived of by the same people. And I realize this kind of breaks it a little bit, but it's, I feel like I, I feel like the, the red, the, it's kind of like the, all of those like um, cutting edge two, where I just do not really care what cutting edge two things happens to these people. Well, no, I understand that. But is that in the, the, I don't care version of it because i asked this very specifically we went mm-hmm. into our born identity episode right about no, i don't think it's ra- canon i think it, no because it's basically it's like it's a bit because he did so based on what i know about it which is what you just told me mm-hmm. it's kind of done as an interesting like it's sort of done as a little like side side thing not like as a we this is this is a set of movies that is going to go on. So I say, no, it's not canon. That's okay. my vote. Well, that's, that's, that can be your vote and that can be mm-hmm. your opinion. What is your, what is your opinion? Well, I, I think it depends on what the future actually holds for each couple. Mm. So I will reject what I want and I will hold on to what I want. Mm. So you're not treating it as canon. Well, the thing is I had to bring this up because I swear we had all established rules of canon yeah. in the way that we established it. Yeah, but I feel like this doesn't, we did establish rules of canon and I feel like this isn't canon i thought the idea behind it was the canon was the original creator and the original director and the original writer and the original actors yes but but the thing that breaks it is it's not just done like so if this was a tv series you wouldn't consider it canon it would have to be a movie always movie no um no i don't think it's the movie or even the tv series i think it's the fact that it's it was done as sort of a it was done as a fundraiser, not as like a, we're continuing this movie with these characters. 
Oh, okay, but, right? Like but it's it, sort it, of a. Tr- it's like it's 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 feels it's because it feels it's contrived. Of course, it's contrived. So is a sequel. Sequels well, are contrived too. Yeah. Okay, but I'm just saying. Like, I feel like it's not. No, I, I understand. Know. It's not like um, the. I guess my point is, it's about intention. Well. My point is, yeah. it's our podcast. We can do whatever the hell we yes, want. Yes, exactly. But I'm just saying, in the rules that were previously established. Right. This- but I'm saying, see, I'm arguing that I am following the rules I previously established. But I will go with you for the sake of making life easier. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to make your life harder later when I find you something that, that follows all of your rules. Yes. And at the same time, you'd be <laughs> and like, And then I well, argue I- with them anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, as long as, we're, okay. as long as we're putting that on the record yes. of our podcast canon. Oh, completely. Yes. 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 Um, this is something that I will try to you know um link in the show notes oh, good, later good, about that good. and and i'll make you watch after we're done with it all yes although definitely. i wonder now do i want to do this because then i'll be spoiling this thing you probably have no interest in watching uh i'm okay with you spoiling it yeah i know that's kind of my yeah, joke i know <laughs> so i'll probably watch it Who knows? so since i have something yeah. to work with right. why don't you tell me what happens with mark peter juliet we'll start with mark peter juliet first um i th- so at the end, you see Mark, Peter, and Juliet all together. Mm-hmm. Um, a month later, uh, after like the supposedly after Christmas, right? So like Jan- January twenty fifth. Um, so, and they're all like they're together. Mm-hmm. I think right after that happens, um, Peter finds out what Mark said or or that mark made this like huge overture mm-hmm. um somehow like either juliet they have a fight and juliet just like like a drunken fight and juliet just like comes out with it um like at kind of accidentally and then just like one little thing or 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 he sees the somehow peter finds out um and i think that he um I think it really drives a wedge between him and P- and uh, so Peter and Mark because mm-hmm. his friend basically it's one thing that he's in love with her but it's yet another that he uh it's yet another that he like um con- you know con- like tells her how he feels while she's in the house with him with with Peter mm. like it's kind of crappy like if you're someone's best friend and you're basically you know that they're both home, and oh, you oh, the like convey okay. you know love in a way that is like, uh, you know a sort of a big gesture that is hiding. Like I just don't feel like that's a a friend. And I think he, so I think that they, I think that Juliet and Peter actually are married for a number of years, but I actually think that Peter and Mark. Um, it really drives a wedge between the two. Like, I think it actually does cause some tension between Peter and Juliet, but I think that actually, you know, Peter's like, I can't take you seriously, dude. Like you messed with my marriage when it was like a few weeks old. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I think that basically Juliet and Peter, you know, just uh, totally unrelated, basically end up getting divorced um, they just grow apart, you know, in 10 years time. And then I think that actually, uh, but I think Peter and Mark kind of find each other again. Mm. And, uh, Mark is like apologizes profusely, um, at some point is like, look, dude, I, I don't know. I was, you know, I would, it's your relation, you know, our friendship means a lot. Mm hmm. That's what I think happens. I think Juliet and Peter find, you know, happiness elsewhere. Mm, okay. So, so what? what's the story? Well, I won't spoil that because I don't want to use it. It's, <laughs> it's dumb. Um, but I think my version of it is Juliet. I don't like the fact that she runs off and kisses him. I don't like it either. But at the same time, though, she kind of sits on it and... What happens is she confronts Mark mm-hmm. about it and says, you know what? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I realize this is something that happened to you, but, and me discovering it was not technically your fault. Right. 
it was a series of circumstances because I was right. ki- I was kind of pushing myself. Yeah, like because yeah, I'm just yeah. very desperate to make sure that my husband's best friend and I get along. Right. But here's something that's kind of important. Now you're saying that you're closing the lid on this or you're closing this. I want you to go off and I want you to go find happiness wherever that will be. Mm-hmm. But I love my husband and I do not want let this blip that mm. I guarantee you five years down the line will not make a shred of difference in your life. Mm. Ruin something that is important to you and my husband, more importantly, my husband. Mm-hmm. So I want you to apologize for your actions. Mm-hmm. And then she's going to like, in the wisdom of Dan Savage from the Savage Love Cast says like, this is not going to help my marriage by talking about this. Right, right. So she's yeah, going to- I don't think to, that she would, yeah. Yeah, so she's, she's I agree going to close it. She's not. It's not going to get blurted out and drunk in anything because yeah. that had no bearing on her relationship with her husband. And there's no reason to leverage it. Yeah, I don't think, and, and to be fair, I don't think she's going to leverage it. I think it's going to be one of those like, mm-hmm. holy shit, it just kind of pop, like she says something, mm-hmm. um, you know, and- a heated thing not like well mark loves me or just but just like i don't know something yep and and so in turn yeah. it's just they're gonna they're gonna be great i i like i like peter yeah me too and juliet because they just seems they seem pure yeah probably not but how would we know we've seen approximately yeah. nine minutes yeah. of their I relationship mean, all we, what we see of them is them being happy mm-hmm. and so yeah like why mm-hmm. why would we doubt that yeah um, so, uh, we've got Jamie and Aurelia and Sarah and Carl. So, mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna let you decide who you want to, um, yeah, I think, um, Jamie and Aurelia, I, I, I it's, ah, oh, this one's so hard because to be honest, I don't, I kind of love the storyline. <laughs> I don't know why it like, if I, if I, it's like, I feel like if I look at it too closely, I'll realize that it's, it's, it's paced, you know, magic, right. Magic of love, right. The magic of love. Like Mm I, 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 I think the thing that makes me less cynical about them is he's basically like, I will move to Portugal or, or, um, we'll, I'll move back to, to, um, England. Mm Mm-hmm. Or we can move to England. So I actually think that he moves to Portugal. Okay. Because I think for her, it's like, for him, he can, un, you know, he is this, right? he's a writer. Uh, he can work anywhere. Um, and it's Portugal. It's not like far. Um, but also the weather is fa- nicer. Also, and his family hates him now. So. Yeah, his family is like kind of mad at him. Well, plus his stupid brother and... Yeah. Yeah, it's awkward. Yeah. So yeah, and, and and actually, yeah, his brother, you're right. Like, okay, I feel even better about this. Yeah, his brother slept with his ex-girlfriend. So Well, current girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Uh and I feel like, yeah, it's like for him and then and and also just like for just his the family, you know, like she has such a life. Like she has family, mm-hmm. she has community. community um She's the best waitress at this friggin' restaurant restaurant in Portugal. And also it's friggin' Portugal. Like Portugal is beautiful and has wonderful food. And like, I don't know, I'm dying to go there. Uh, I kind of might go there in the spring, but like, so, you know, some of this is that, but, um, (laughs) I, um, I feel like he's, you know, because he's got the schedule, like, I mean, obviously he has to go on book tours, so he's gonna, you know, be able to, he's traveling, Um, but I think they, I think that they, I think they do really well. At some point she actually starts feeling like the whole family thing is kind of like, I think they both start feeling like the family thing is a bit oppressive Mm -hmm. and she starts, um, because especially like she ends up going with him on maybe a couple book tours and, uh, I think they, they actually might move to a, um, I think they decide to start like a a bed and breakfast in uh in Marseille. Mm-hmm. And I don't I just realized that actually quite a few of my 
<laughs> but I heard a few of my my what happens next involve bed and breakfast for some reason. And also people who are, you know, acting or whatever. Well, they start writing. Yeah, that's you true. Make them yeah, writers. Yeah. I always try to make them something. Yeah, I don't know why. Anyway, um, you're right. Uh, I'm starting to see a pattern. And so I think that they actually do because I think as they get to know each other, um, because they they have to get to know each other um they also kind of get to reinvent themselves and be the person that they um like they can be anything there's no like you met me and you know this is who you will be for the rest of time it's like they don't know that much about each other so they could they it's sort of like they both are learning the language, discovering. I mean, I don't think it's going to be easy. I think the first three months are going to be really amazing and Mm fantasy-like. And then it's just going to get a little hard. Um, But I I think that, like, um, they both are kind of, uh, like, the idea, you know, it's one of those things where their origin story is so great that they sort of want to put more time into it. So they, I think they stay last and I think they have, they have family, um, her family. I mean, no, but they, they also have their own, they, they start their Ah. own family Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a little later. Um, I don't think they have like, I think they have one kid and I think they're like, you know, they, they live in different places. Um, not, I mean, they throughout together throughout, you know, and, and, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what about you? Well, um, what's frustrating about the way they did it, and I know it's for comedy's sake, and he was kind of a goofball. Mm-hmm. What, what's frustrating is that, you know, I don't know where they're living, but they're together and they have mm-hmm. kids. And they're still trying to play up the fact that they still don't understand each other. Right. And the kids also speak, I believe, Portuguese. And he's just like, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, it's been 13 years. Right. You should, you have really not put any effort into this. I know it's meant to be for humor right now, but you're a jackass. Yeah. So I'm going to swipe that one. But well, well, French. I mean, to be fair, he's being... Hmm? Wait, you said Portuguese? Yeah. No, yeah. In, in this Red Nose, oh, actually, future... Oh, I see, really. The kids can... I believe they speak Portuguese. His wife, Portuguese. And he's still, like, fumbling through his Portuguese. Oh, that's... Oh, that's crap. That's gross. Again, it's supposed to be for, like, laughs. It's, but yeah. 13 years! So that just makes him his just makes him a bad guy. Yeah, it makes him sort of yeah, you're like living in the country. Hmm. I don't well, I don't know where they're living. That's the point. Oh, but here's okay. what I'm going to do. I'm going to swipe yeah. that. I'm going to keep the children and I'm going to keep them as one multilingual family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I like that better. I like them together. Yeah, me too. Um and I like them um putting equal effort in. I mean, if he's yeah. the guy who was saying we can live here, we can live there. Right. He can still fumble. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we expect his Portuguese. I mean, it takes a while, and especially he's a writer. It's frustrating. See, you say that. Yeah, but again, I know, I know. again, I, I just writer. this is my future plan. Well, what do you? What, what does he do? I, you know, he's job? probably some just. You know, he's probably like some writer, but just not the novelist. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he's like a. I'm not going to say technical writer because a technical writer is a real thing. But like he's more on the less creative side, although technical writers can't be creative. I'm talking about, you know, manuals. Oh, yeah, like he's, yeah. yeah I, he's, I think, he's, I think he's, he's there. Like copywriter. Huh? Co- or maybe an editor of some kind, right. but he is an, an editor of things that are not, mm-hmm. editor of nonfiction, we'll right. say, you know? Okay. Yeah. I, I feel that about All him. Right. He doesn't strike me as, again, with the fumbling as he does, he doesn't strike me as the great creative mind, um, let alone a successful mm-hmm. mystery writer. I mean, there's a lot of um, sort of technical... He's going to write fan fiction, Plana? <laughs> love Actually fan fiction. No, no, because Love Actually is real. <laughs> Why would he do that when there's so much Pride and Prejudice fan fiction he could be writing right now? <laughs> About himself, that's awesome. Oh my okay. God, I just imploded Ooh, on myself because the oh, internet is in love God. with me. Okay, so... Um, wow. So, Sarah, yeah. Sarah and Carl. Sarah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it goes on. I think Carl actually leaves because he just feels kind of sad, and Sarah never does. Like, <laughs> leaves the company. Yeah. Um, yeah, Carl's gone. Yeah, and Carl, like, yeah, it's... I think, yeah, I, it's, I think it just goes on, and it makes me really sad. Yep. Would you like the Red Nose, actually? Yes, I would. So in America only, U.S. only. It's hard to find, unfortunately, but mm-hmm. I'm sure if you search the internet hard enough, you can find it. 
Um, I'm going to keep this one because she answers her phone Mm -hmm. and she answers it in the exact way that she would every time her brother would call. And you think she's talking to her brother and she says, okay. And then it pans to the other side. And on the other side of that phone conversation is her husband portrayed by Dr. McDreamy himself, Patrick Dempsey. Oh. And apparently one of the things that he says to her on the phone is, I I love the way you always answer the phone when I call you. So mm. her dedication of being connected to that person on the other side is translated to a relationship. So it's oh, kind of a... Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Well, I mean, yeah. But it's also kind of a sad implication that right. I think her brother's dead. Oh. And so she can put oh. put something into the relationship because he's not around. Mm. But here's how I'm going to massage this to feel yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. Her brother isn't dead. But in turn, Patrick Dempsey also has a family member. We're going to say his mother, who requires a lot of um, nursing care. Mm-hmm. And so he understands that sometimes life have to, has to drop for the sake of caretaking for a person. Right. So she understands that. He understands that. They got each other's back. And so that's where the relationship comes from. And she gets okay. exactly what she needs out of McDreamy. Oh, okay. All right. I will accept that. And uh, that makes me happy. Well, it's, okay. it's better than, than life goes on. Fuck you, Carl. Yeah, I know. Mine is sad, but I just like the but whole that's... thing made me so sad. Yeah. She might as whatever. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Here. No, no, too late. Okay. It's close. Right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So we did them all. Damn. Well, we didn't do them all. We have to do the ne- them on the next thing. I think we need a break. We do. But Let's that doesn't matter because we're just going to, you know, take a breather. We're going to inhale. You think you might have something that would help us like refresh ourselves? I kind of feel like I, yeah. Um, yeah, I need to. I need something that um, can kind of help me reset. Mm-hmm. Um, so recently, um, I, uh, I, I think that I like say aromatherapy is an excellent way to reset. And I have recently been um, resetting by using um, Hottie by Nature, Mm -hmm. which um, has all sorts of, it has, has, it's a really interesting blend. It's got um, kind of orange and tangerine, different kinds of orange, tangerine, um, rosewood, lavender, vanilla, which I know you love. Do enjoy the vanilla. Myrrh, Mm -hmm. um, rosemary, Mm -hmm. and it's just like a, it's not too sweet, but I just find it like puts me in a really, um, I don't know, it just puts me in kind of a cozy, um, warm, but spicy sort of place. Like it's, um, like, so I, I really, really enjoy it. Like it's a really unique fragrance. Um, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's sort of hard to describe, but it definitely, whenever I like, well, I, I, I sort of forget about my like work and outside self and feel like I am here at home. Kind of, it's very, it's, it's grounding, but it's a little romantic. I'm a fan. Um, if you want any of this for yourself, you should go to Frankie and Murr. That's F-R-A-N-K-I-E and M-Y-R-R-H and enter the promo code happily one h-a-p-p-i-l-y and the number one and you will get 20 percent off and free shipping and you support the show so i really hope you do that if you for some reason don't want 20 percent off you you can still get free shipping on any order over 35 dollars in the u.s so not only are they a fantastic sponsor of the show but they have great products that we have been enjoying a lot really great is that we have one of their sons Mm-hmm. to give away yes yes so uh what's really great is that um we have two we have two um one of it is that's amore and the other one's under the influence right yeah and it's uh it's really cool so the way to enter our contest go to twitter mm-hmm. or you can go to instagram and what you need to do is tell us even though we're only halfway through the episode we're going to mm-hmm. be running this through to Christmas. part two Right. To, yeah, you have until Christmas, till part two. Mm-hmm. Let us know who is your favorite couple from Love Actually or mm-hmm. your favorite character from Love Actually. Yes. Yes. And so what you need to do is, um, if you're going to do it on Twitter or or on Instagram, well, you have to do it on Twitter or on Instagram, mm-hmm. make sure you at us or tag us mm-hmm. and then let us know with a photo on Instagram or however you want to do it. Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite character? Yep. Make from sure. Love Actually. Yep. Make sure you uh, connect us at the adding or the uh, yeah. tagging. And and just one thing is we only can will can ship domestic in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Much like Frankie and Mer, the free Much, the yes. free shipping. Yes, unfortunately, we're sorry for our international listeners. But we will we make it up to you 
with yes. more discussion of Love Actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's totally going to make it up for free stuff. Yeah, I know. Um, so to help you out here, mm-hmm. you can catch us on Twitter at HemeCast. H-E-A-M-C-A-S-T. And we are also HemeCast on Instagram. So there's the contest mm-hmm. aspect of it. You can also find us on Facebook at Happily Ever Aftermath. Um, if you check out any of the social media and search the hashtag Lady Pod Squad, mm-hmm. you can find a bunch of really cool uh, lady led fantastic podcasts. And actually, that talk a lot about love. Actually, if you if you can't get enough, yeah, um, we can highlight you know your favorite is problematic part of the Lady Pod mm-hmm. Squad. And again, we'll also, link to, we'll link to that episode. I think the cutaways oh. discussed it as well. Well, see, yes, they have. And Polina mentioned this because I am wearing my cutaways T shirt. Yes, as yes. we speak, and it's 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 quite. It's quite fantastic. I am just drowning in, you know, the Lady Pod Squad energy. It's the best energy you can drown in. Yeah. (laughs) If you're going to drown in some energy, that's that's a good choice. So next time. Right. Will be very soon for us in terms of recording, but um, we got to get moving there. So uh, part two, Mm -hmm. all the couples that we missed will hopefully, um, they're more dense. So we'll, we'll get going then. Yeah. Okay. Um, So in the meantime. Right. Um. Love is all around us. It's ever around you. Okay. <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.